you so much for coming back to my channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about substance abuse in a clinical sense. We're gonna cover what are the four disorders under substance abuse. We're also gonna cover the types of substance abuse that you are or can get into, for example, depressants, opiates, hallucinants, and gambling. All those are substance abuse that you can fall into that will clinically give you a substance abuse disorder. So without further ado, let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share this information, especially for someone who's going to school, who's dealing with any type of substance abuse, or just wants to learn about substance abuse and doesn't want to go to school. <laughs> so watch this video, stay tuned, and um, let's get the ball rolling. All right, so we're gonna be defining substance use disorder. The first one's gonna be intoxication abuse, withdrawal abuse, substance abuse, and dependent abuse. There's four of these type of abuses that you can fall into clinically if you go see a therapist or a clinician to seek help, and substance abuse is one of those problems that is actually impairing your everyday routine which means you're dysfunctional. So there's a difference between you abusing a substance or a job or just anything in general. When you abuse something and it becomes dysfunctional, that's when it becomes a disorder or it becomes something that's destructive within your life. So we're gonna cover those four. And at the end, I will be talking about some coping skills and interventions. And I will also be adding some other information that my teacher um, provided me with while I was taking the class, okay? Substance intoxication is very, very interesting because it pretty much explains that if you're diagnosed with substance intoxication, it means that when you take whatever substance you're taking, it really is impairing you psychologically, behaviorally. So if you drink at a certain point, you get super aggressive and you, you don't even realize that you're getting aggressive. Or you may drink to a point where you withdraw and you're less or you're more passive or you don't want to come out because you're drinking. So and then eventually those behaviors tend to affect your relationships. It starts to affect you um, and your work or um, just in general, it really just starts to affect you and it's becoming dysfunctional. So it's basically more geared towards your psychological effect when you're intoxicated and your behaviors when you're intoxicated. So that's the definition. Substance withdrawal pretty much means that you've been doing the substance for a really, really, really long time. And now it's actually doing the opposite of what you used to respond when you were intoxicated. So it's to a point where you don't even want to get up, you can't hold a job, you lost all your family, and you're withdrawn completely. And all you really think about is just drinking or doing that substance. So that's what substance withdrawal means. Something, thirdly, substance abuse is something that we all pretty know more about. And substance abuse is basically when you really just abuse the, the substance that you're taking. You're constantly just taking more than what you should and you don't really have a limit and you just keep doing it and doing it and doing more and more and more and more you're abusing the drug you don't need to to the point you might already be be high you might already be drunk but you're just going to the peak and going and you have no limit that's what a substance abuse is you just constantly are abusing that substance at any point at any time now lastly substance dependence is something that I know people get confused with substance abuse and substance dependence. Substance dependence means that you're able to take your substance, but you're able to have a regular life. Like you're just taking your 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 shot, your your hit, certain amount of times a day, just so that you be normal. So it's not really impairing you, but your body is pretty much dependent of that substance you're taking in and that you guys that could that could count as like soda like your soda is a lot of sugar so your body gets used to intaking all that sugar that whenever we stop drinking soda for some people they get headaches or you get withdrawals or you're, you're addicted where you're like oh i want to get that soda it's the same thing we sometimes overdo it with the soda sometimes we overdo it with the with the sweets sometimes we overdo it with the fast food it's the same thing substance 
dependence. You're dependent on that food. Like, I got to get that food because if, if, if I don't, I'm going to die. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to die, but it's not. It's, it's just a feeling. It's just a feeling. It's your addiction. It's just like reeling you in, but you got to cut it short. So those are the four that you could clinically get diagnosed with. Now we're going to talk about interventions and coping skills. When I dealt with my own personal substance abuse, what really helped me is changing my environment completely. If you have friends, family members that does the substance that you're trying to stop doing, you need to keep your distance for a while until you're able to build that willpower. I think that it's possible for you to be around people that used to do the drugs that you were addicted to. It's just the mindset. But if you're unable to, just be self-aware and make sure like, yeah, I can't do that. You know, I need to know my boundaries. You know your boundaries. And hopefully you can communicate those boundaries to your family members, friends, colleagues, so they can respect it and understand why you choose um, not to participate in certain activities or parties or events because you really, really are trying your hardest to not fall under your old ways of into your substance abuse now another thing that i will always suggest is exercise exercise gives you a full natural of dopamine serotonin all that natural stuff that we try to chase when we're doing uppers and downers exercise 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 another thing is picking up another addiction but something that's more positive what's helped me is this youtube channel and my instagram I was really, really stuck in my own abuse and doing all this stuff really helped me be busy. So keeping yourself busy, doing things that you love, things that keep you occupied and you have to do activities that don't remind you of that, 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 that substance abuse. So if you're used to going to places and drinking, try to avoid those places until you're ready to go there and experience them in a different way. I don't suggest for you to avoid, 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 because I think it's important that you expose yourself to certain situations so you build that willpower. But I really do think that it's important for you to do baby steps. Don't really go full force and know your limits and make sure you set yourself boundaries, as I mentioned. And so now let's talk about some of the depressants. The depressants, obviously one of them is alcohol. Um, stimulants are like cocaine. Um, hallucinants are like mushrooms, LSD. People can actually abuse those. Supposedly, from what I've heard, it's very hard for you to really abuse um, hallucinates, but it is possible depending on your personality, depending on, on your um, resources, I guess. But another thing could also be caffeine. And it could be opiates. There's a huge opiate addiction um, in a lot, of, a lot of different places, and it's very saddening. I know that there's a lot of substance abuse going on with Adderall, so please be careful with that, you guys. I know a lot of you guys feel like you're almighty and... And it's going around in college and all that stuff. And a lot of kids are abusing it. And they think that um, it's not going to hurt them in the long run. But you're really risking yourself to getting yourself into uh, natural psychosis. So just be really, really careful. Do not abuse that drug. If I can pass college without doing any type of stimulants, I'm sure you guys can do it. Um, and I'm old. So try it differently. Don't fall into um, doing substance abuse during school. I know that that's what's going on nowadays in the new generation. So just be aware of that. Also be aware over the fact that a lot, a lot of students are using Adderall as a new date rape drug. So please girls, be careful out there. Take care of your drinks. It's something that's new and different and easy for people to do. And it's very scary. So just pay attention to that, you guys, all right? Another thing in, that I learned from taking my abnormal psychology class was when my teacher explained why people overdose. So the reason why people overdose when they've been clean for a really long time is the environment. There's just too much dopamine going on where it, it triggers an overdose. And I'm going to give you an example. Let's say there was a person who did heroin. But he would do heroin in the home setting all the time. And then he decided to get clean. And he was able to get clean and all that stuff. And great for him. Let's say he's been clean for about two or three months. And he decides to go to a party. And then all of a sudden, he's tempted to do heroin again. Now, this is a different environment. Mind you, you guys. It's not in the home setting what he's used to. He's in a different environment. A little bit more chaotic. There's a lot of stuff going on. And so when a person decides to do their regular substance abuse... Um, even if it's the same dosage, it's really, really risking and increasing the chances of you having an overdose. And this, I mean, I was appalled, but it made sense to why my teacher explained this to me. And so basically she explained that 
when a person's in that type of setting and then they decide to do the abuse, it's just way too much dopamine going on. And it's just the, the brain just doesn't know what to do and then boom, you, that's when you, sh you shut down. So the way I can explain it is that there's a bunch of neurons and all that stuff and when you take a substance, it pretty much blocks those receptors. And then so all that stuff, dopamine or serotonin, is just bunching up on each other and it's like, oh! And that's why you're feeling so great, oh my God! And then and then you're going down, right? And then that's when the come down comes, right? Depending on whatever substance abuse you're using, um, the come down is very, very horrible. Um, and also too, that's when you start to build tolerance, right? So whatever substance abuse you end up doing, you're going to build a tolerance, unless you're lucky. I mean, I don't really have found anyone that's told me, oh yeah, I still take the same amount and I'm still the same. Alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, whatever you call it, even with coffee you build a tolerance so just be careful when you build your tolerance you'll start to abuse it and you can easily fall under these four substance abuse disorders that i mentioned so be careful you guys be be careful one thing that i will always suggest is read the book the power of habit the power of habit really explains how exercise and having a routine and making a plan really helps you break an old habit so if you're really trying to stop, you really want to try to stop drinking, you really want to stop doing a certain type of drug or whatever, um, or eating fast food, set a plan, make sure you do a routine, exercise, because when you exercise, it's already training your brain, your willpower brain, little muscle, to create that willpower to say no to that drug. Because you knew you build that willpower to go to the gym once or two times or three times for a day. Building that willpower will help you build that willpower on other places around your life. So, and also too, doing that technique of the habit loop, you know, do the little habit loop. What's your cue? When you see someone smoking, you see someone drinking, you're going to, it it, make, it prompts you, right? You're like, oh, I don't want to, I want to take a drink too. Now, what are you going to do when you hear or see that cue, right? What are you going to do? You're used to picking up that drink. You're used to smoking or you're doing whatever, right? So do something else all right i'm gonna get up and i'm gonna go to another place or i'm gonna go do something that's gonna distract me to not focus on this or let me do something that's gonna give me the same reward as i did when i drank well you know help me talk well why don't i go and talk to someone that makes me feel comfortable for right now and so it can help me get rid of that or let me challenge myself and go talk to someone different um to kind of distract myself from that cue um find other ways to get that same reward that you got when you took that beer when you took that hit <laughs> whatever it was so the habit of the loop you guys the habit of the loop find the cue replace it whatever addiction you have or habit to something more positive you get the same reward same thing with me right i used to do my abuse i replace it with youtube and instagram and editing and posting and spending a lot of time in doing that and i get the same reward like i feel happy i'm like you know, like it makes me feel good. Like, and that's basically the reward I used to get too when I used to do my substance abuse, right? Like I was just looking for like relaxness, happiness, like it makes me happy. And you know, it's, it's one of those things that worked out for me. Now that's me. I don't know what could work for you guys. You guys really got to figure out maybe it's turning a business. Maybe it's taking an art class. Maybe it's buying a bike and just going on bike rides or doing mountain biking, right? Maybe is taking an instrument class that you've always wanted to do when you were younger and now you have the money and the time to do it. You know, that's another idea that you can do. You could do a lot of stuff that can distract you, but I will say that going to AA helps reinforce the idea of helping you not go back to your substance abuse. That's the whole purpose of AA. Um, another thing is, is that you have to believe in yourself, you guys. Believe, believe, believe that it's gonna work. If you don't believe in yourself, if you don't believe that the system's gonna work for you to help you break your substance abuse, it's gonna be really, really, really hard. So believe in yourself, believe in your system, and things will fall into place. If you have, if you feel hopeless and you're already thinking negative, then everything's just gonna fall apart. It's all about mindset, you guys. So stay positive, keep it pushing, try different things, if you need a little rehab to kind of get you going, I will always suggest that too. I've even contemplated because I know that I kind of just need like a set thing for like a couple of weeks and then it kind of like helps me with it. Like I know myself that maybe that would be beneficial, but luckily I found things that help help me control my substance abuse to a point where I'm able to have that willpower. Like I don't have to anymore because like I'm so used to not anymore and 
it's I'm slowly getting there. So it's like baby steps. And also, you guys, do not be so hard on yourselves when you relapse. Okay, habits. Okay, problem solve. Figure it out so that you don't fall into going into your substance abuse again, and be ready for the next time that might trigger you to fall into that same pattern. So don't let those downfalls ruin all your progress. Don't ever do that with anything, with any of the stuff that we're teaching, where I'm teaching you here. Do not be so hard on yourself. Stay positive and keep on pushing. There's obviously some genetic factors. People say that if addiction was in your family or in your genes, then they're more prone to fall into a substance abuse. And I completely agree with that. Both sides of my family have addiction problems and that's why I really try to stay away from certain substance abuse that I know that I'll probably get hooked and very difficult for me to even get out of. So being aware and knowing your background is also really, really important to prevent you from going into substance abuse. Um, like I mentioned, also too, behavioral. Behavioral, you guys, modeling. So if you are used to seeing your dad or siblings, brothers, uncles, um, friends drink and cope at a certain way and, and it, you just kind of get that mindset where it's okay to drink um, the way they taught you or what you observed. So sometimes some of these behaviors are actually passed down by families and um, and we think that it's okay because we all do it. So I completely understand that, but I know that for some people it could be very damaging. So just pay attention to your surroundings, you guys. Um, and yeah, behavioral, it's making sure that you don't drink in front of your kids because your kids will eventually either copy your behaviors or say, I'm never going to drink because you get you traumatize me. <laughs> so, and on a more positive note in regards to, I know these are clinical diagnoses and I know I work in the mental health field. I have a different point of view when it comes out to the diagnosis, although they are in the book and all that stuff. I don't really believe in them to some extent i really feel like we shouldn't be diagnosing people i think we should be doing more preventative programs so despite as to whatever disorder you were diagnosed with just remember there's a way out and there is solutions and there is a way you can problem solve your way out of it just because you have a diagnosis doesn't mean that you can have a regular life you're still you don't let those disorders get the best out of you or substance abuse Bring the old back you, the good you. <laughs> That's all I want to focus on. But I really hope this was really um, informative for you guys. If you were if you're learning um, through abnormal psychology, I hope this was funny for you and entertaining. Um, if not, if you just wanted to know a little bit more about substance abuse, I hope this really helps out. I'll talk to you guys later. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. But wait. I love you guys. Bye.